Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to our show. Um, so excited you're here. We are the Laugh Index Theater. This is our first show of our 13th season, the 2022-2023 season. Um, it's exciting. It's virtual. Um, we, uh, the Laugh Index Theater is based in D.C. Most of our team's in New York. You know how that goes. Uh, except Eugene. Eugene's uh, currently in Singapore again. Um, and, you know... We'll see Eugene when we see him. He's a globetrotter, baby. Uh, so yeah, if if you if you like what you see, thanks for buying a ticket tonight. Uh, first of all, we appreciate that. If you uh, if you didn't buy a ticket, if you got one of those seven free tickets, good luck. Uh, you're this is your lucky charm, and we're so glad you're here. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're trying a new format this year, guys. Uh, what we're going to do is every other month, we're going to do a fully produced sketch show, like what you saw, um, last year. And then on the in-between months, we're going to do these fun variety shows where our players have the chance to do some, some different things, be it stand up, storytelling, characters, you know, what have you. Um, and we'll also be featuring, uh, other other comedians, so stand-up comedians, characters, other sketch teams. Tonight, for instance, we have Wilburn, which is a mostly New York-based sketch team, but they're a little bit all over the place, just like we are. Uh, also, like we are, I am involved in it, and there was um, absolutely no bias involved in booking them at all whatsoever. Uh, so, yeah, you're going to see Wilburn's half-hour laugh at the end of this show. We got So our players are going to do some stuff for you, then we're going to present Wilburn to you. If you would like to be involved in a future show, if you're a comedian, please don't submit if you're not. But if you are, uh, you can send me an email at sketch at litcomedy.com. We'll get you booked on one of these bad boys. Uh, so yeah, if you like what you see tonight, make sure you uh, comment in the chat uh, over one of these directions. Um, you know, spread love, spread cheer, just don't spread hate. Spread laughter, spread joy. Uh, it's going be a good time and that lets us know what you like uh so yeah we'll be having a show every month just like always uh and up first like i said we're gonna have our laugh index players and to start off our laugh index players we have a little bit of stand-up from caroline hibbert so uh put your hands together let's go it's the return of zoom stand-up <laughs> just kidding guys it's me i'm gonna go turn on the light really quick so you're not scared okay <laughs> also the way this is set up i feel like i'm just performing to Catherine, so that's how i'm gonna do the rest of the show i'm just performing to Catherine. okay guys i know it's zoom stand up i'm sorry you only got five minutes of this and then the rest of the show is not gonna be what this is um Okay, so in terms of stand up, I have been going back out. I've been doing mics recently. It's felt good. I took a little hiatus this summer where I wasn't doing it a lot. And when I'm on stage, I'm just like, wow, why did I take a break? Like, this is what I love to do. It makes me feel good. And then uh, the other night I was at a mic and a guy went up before me and he made several <laughs> repulsive jokes about beating women. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Right. Cause of, cause of fucks like you, that's why I, I wasn't doing it for a bit. Um, but no, I am not going to let shitty men stop me from doing what I love. I'm going to treat comedy like it's a song I just discovered and I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep playing it until I want to throw up. Right. Okay. It's very black and white thinking, but it's gotten me to this point in my life. All right. Some other updates, uh, in September, I got to six months of living in New York. Good for me, right? Um, when I first got here, the subway shooting happened. Does everybody remember that? I don't know if you remember it because I can't see you because this is on Zoom. But it did happen. Thank you, Catherine. Catherine's nodding yes. Um, it did happen. You know, it's like as warm of a welcome as you can expect in Brooklyn. Uh, but it was a bit jarring. Uh, and, you know, I just want to also clarify, I was nowhere near the subway that day, nor was anybody I know affected. I'm just a millennial white woman. So I have to insert myself into any traumatic event within a 20 mile radius, make it about me. It's like when Notre Dame caught on fire a few years ago and a bunch of people who looked like me started posting their Paris vacation pics. Like, oh my God, I cannot believe this beautiful building I stood in front of for 15 minutes was destroyed. 
Paris, je t'aime. That means Paris, I love you. Um, for any of you non-French speakers in the audience, I think there's at least a few of you. Uncultured, sad. Okay, uh, this one's kind of new material, so it's rough, so bear with me, but uh, I'm 30. That's it. No, I'm 30 and I don't feel old. I feel like people tell you once you get to like your late twenties, you're supposed to start feeling like older, like an adult. I don't know what that means. Um, I don't feel a particular way. Maybe it's cause I'm not like married with kids and boring, but like, I just don't understand. Like, at least for me, people started complaining about aging by the time they were 22 or 23. And it's really baffling to me that we're putting all of this money and research into the science of living longer when you're just going to start bitching about life like a quarter of the way through right like maybe people have always done this but i'm having like a hard time picturing some 12 year olds in the middle ages just having a midlife crisis you know what i mean and like where is my youth gone um i don't know i spent it farming again it needs a little it needs a little work um but you know there's only one surefire way to get out of aging, Botox. Okay, where, where am I going from here? Um, I don't even know how much time I have left. Catherine, that's my cat's automatic feeder going off. As much time as I want. Um, okay, well, somebody who did age like a salty cod was uh, Queen Elizabeth II. She lived till 96 and I did watch her funeral and it's just like, it was so expensive and the UK is in a really bad recession right now. And I'm just saying she could have stolen my idea for a funeral because she stole everything else. Um, and I in turn stole this from the internet, but I'll share it with you. And this is picture what she could have done. Um, my ashes mixed in with glitter and a coffin with uh, explosives attached. The explosives go off, kind of like rain down on the gas. Well, thanks for the fallout. Thanks for the memories by fallout boy plays in the background. It's going to be great. I'm really sad. I'm not going to be there to see it. I don't have a dream wedding, but I do have a dream funeral and that's it. Um, I'll end on this. Sorry. I lost track of time a little bit, but, um, I was talking to my friend the other day and he said, I'm really happy. I'm not one of those whites with really thin lips. And I was like, yeah, those are my people, uh, but it serves a genetic purpose. It's so, you know, the lips are really thin, so you can close them up real tight, like seal it in like a vacuum seal and really let the anger and repressed rage marinate in there. And then you just like get it loose with a few drops of, you know, like alcohol and it all comes boiling out and um, you ruin grandma's funeral. Um, it's been a lot of death jokes. It's a Halloween show though. I'm done for the night. Thank God. Let's watch my talented cast mates do their thing. Thank you, everyone.
it is I, Balthazar the Destroyer. What's up, guys? Long time no possess. Feels good to be back in Demonton, Illinois. A seemingly normal suburb that rests atop a swirling void of unknowable darkness. This small town sure feels a whole lot smaller after you've ushered in the apocalypse. Feels like forever ago that I used to terrorize these streets. I was such a baby. I'm sure you all assumed I'd go on to do great things after I was voted most likely to capture 666 virgins and use them as a ritual sacrifice to Beelzebub. But what can I say? Home is where the human hearts are. Oh man, is this Mr. Basso's classroom? Ugh, he was always my favorite English teacher's body to use as a flesh vessel for my evil schemes. Should we go inside and visit? He didn't remember me. It's fine, he's, he's busy. What do you say we sneak into the girls' locker room? Oh, what, is that not cool anymore? Okay, okay, it's, yeah, it's, scrap that. Go Wildcats. Oh, what about the French teacher, Miss Considine? You guys remember her? Oh, oh, right, yeah. I had to get a sub after my minions ate her entrails. This is where I led my demon army to victory against our arch rivals. A reluctant but gifted 16-year-old girl and her two loyal BFFs. Plus, there's that one 40-year-old janitor they're always hanging out with. Their little gang may have had the advantage of an ancient celestial coven that prophesied the victory of good over evil, but we played with our whole hearts. Plus the thousand human hearts we each ate to fuel up for battle. With only 15 seconds left in battle, Asmodeus passes the cursed amulet to Balthazar. Balthazar is literally flying past the ten grave line. We've never seen a play like this, ladies and gentlemen. And the crowd goes wild. Power of friendship. Never saw that one coming. Telekinesis. Demon fire. Necromancy. Oh, no way. This is my old lair. Me and my minions had some wild times here, let me tell you. Hey, you guys party? Cause I got some unicorns milk in the fridge. Epic seance went down right here. Stuff of ancient legends, dude. I drink so much blood, I spent half the night with my third head hanging over the cauldron. <laughs> Boot and rally though, am I right? Man, you brought holy water to the lair? Fucking party foul, dude. <laughs> Man, this place always was a great spot for demonic activity. Makes sense that it's a McDonald's now. I'm gonna get a McFlurry, you want anything? There was like this chant that all the guys used to do. I don't know, something Latin, it'll come back to me. Hey mom, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm with some friends right now, so. I don't know when I'll be home. Sorry mom. Yeah, hail Satan, hail Satan. Hey, beautiful, you know that portal over by the high school? It was all me, baby. So, uh, <laughs> you a virgin? Cause I got a ritual happening later if you want to stop by. I said talk to me, damn it, or else I'm gonna throw you in the fire! You stupid bitch! <laughs>
story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down, and I'd like to take a minute just sit right here. Oh, me? Oh, I'm fine. No, no, really, I'm, I'm fine. I, I don't want to talk about it. Don't ask me about it. I'm totally fine. No, I'm, uh, look at me, I'm, I'm just... Fine, I'm totally fine, fine. You don't want to hear from me, nobody does. No one wants to hear from an old ghost, do they? It's fine, it's fine. I'm totally fine. Oh, this old thing. <laughs> I mean, it's probably 50 years old at least, but you know the trend cycle, everything comes back around. <laughs> Hides a multitude of sins in here. <laughs> the trend cycle. Bring back real hauntings if you're bringing back trends. But no, I'm fine, really. I'm totally fine. But let me tell you, hauntings? I used to be appreciated, feared. While many slept in their slumber, they dreamt of me. They thought of me constantly. I was alive. I was loved. No, I'm fine. I'm totally fine now. I'm just having a moment, you know? It just hits. You heard Joanne bragging about her mansion and her residence just scream at the drop of a pin. No, I'm fine, really. I'm totally fine. Not all of us are coasting, Joanne. No, I'm fine, really. You know what it's like trying to scare this new generation? Always on their phones, always talking openly and analyzing their feelings. Do you know what I miss? I miss their pent-up parents. Those boomers, you'd scare them and they wouldn't talk about it. And their parents, forget it. I'd be haunting multi-generational families and no one would say a damn word to each other. Just mumble in their sleep. Trauma would eat away at them and I'd thrive. <laughs> but no, I'm fine, really. I'm... Do you have a cigarette? I got out of ghost school. I was so excited, you know. Real ghost artists understand the feeling. There's nothing like it. Now we're all just trying to get off with a spam text every now and then. Maybe cut off their TikTok midway. The horror! Oh, don't ask me. I'm fine. I'm totally fine. 
But God, they don't notice if we move a damn thing in their apartments. They're always air being being it out. Those weighted blankets, try shoving or pulling those off a bed to scare somebody. Impossible, what do those things weigh? They must be suffocating under there. Oh, and those anti-anxiety and sleep aids and noise machines. Forget it, there's no nightmares to intercept anymore. I can't make loud noises and sit on the bed and scare them. Nobody can hear me. But no, I'm fine, really. But I know, I've just gotta make my own opportunities, make my own work, create my own content. But I'm fine, it's here I am. I'm totally fine, I'm totally fine. Oh, totally fine. God, I miss when going viral meant a death sentence. Yes, I died of smallpox. That's why I cover my face, dear. I'm fine! Oh my god! Please don't hurt me! Whatever happened to predictability? My name is Nick Phillips, and I'm here to share with you a tale from the days of old. Tonight's story is set in a time long past. The year was 2001, and I was just a young boy, 11 years old. I was the president of the Pokemon Trainers Club. This was a glorious group, which was governed by our club's constitution. It contained our Bill of Rights. For instance, all members have the right to bear arms, by which I do not mean limbs, but guns. However, no guns are allowed which contain bullets, shells, clips, grenades, harpoons, darts, air, or staples. The only guns allowed are rubber band and water. The Constitution also contained a code of laws. For instance, it was illegal to fart. If you wanted to fart, you would have to leave the clubhouse and go as far away as you can until you couldn't see it anymore. Closing your eyes doesn't count. There had to be, like, another building in the way. And the Constitution also told us what would happen to people who break the law. It said, if someone breaks a law, they will go to court, where they will be given three chances to provide a reasonable explanation for their wrongdoing. If none is given, they will be subjected to a hot water gun shooting. Now, the members of our club were peaceful and orderly, so there wasn't much need for this criminal justice system. But I really wanted the chance to try this out, and it seemed my wish would be granted, because soon after, my brother Ted's Pokemon Silver game cartridge went missing. And we gained word that our neighbor Tommy had recently acquired his own Pokemon Silver game, which he said he found in the alley. Hmm. Seems a little suspicious if you ask me. So my brother Ted went to Tommy's house and said, Hey Tommy, I heard you have Pokemon Silver. Would you like to battle with me? And Tommy said, No, I don't have Silver. Yes, very suspicious. Also, a few days later, I happened to see someone who looked a lot like Tommy trying to break into my bedroom window with a trowel. I'm not saying it was him, but it looked a lot like him. So, although Tommy was technically outside of our jurisdiction, I figured the theft of the Pokemon Silver game would be the perfect candidate to try out our court system. Now my brother Ted, the victim of this crime, wanted nothing of this. He thought that this could start another war, but I wasn't to be stopped because I was too thirsty for justice. So, I set the trial date for July 18th. I announced it in the club newsletter, and I sent letters to Tommy notifying him of the trial. Now, it actually rained that day, so the trial had to be postponed to the next day, July 19th, but the trial happened. 
We went to Tommy's house to get him for the trial. Uh, said to his parents, hey, can Tommy come out and play? And they said, no, Tommy's on vacation. So we went ahead and had the trial without him. I appointed my best friend, Chris Mojica, from school to be the judge at the trial, since I knew that he was interested in matters of the law. I took the opportunity to hold the trial in my side yard so that I could use the trowel marks on my window as evidence. I, I presented my arguments and my extremely small amount of evidence, and it convinced Chris to declare Tommy guilty. And Chris sentenced Tommy to pay five dollars to each of us for wasting our time. I thought this was a little excessive. Uh, five dollars. There were six of us there, so that would be thirty dollars. And who has that kind of money? So I never enforced this judgment. Eventually, we let bygones be bygones, and two years later, Tommy was allowed to join the club. The club remained active until 2005, and I must say, my biggest regret in all that time is I never got to do a hot water gun shooting. Then I don't care. Oops. Yes. Yes, we did do the whole book, which is in the public domain, so don't come for us. All right. Uh, so that was that was that was the sh portion of the show that it was the laugh index players. Give a hand for those laugh index players. Those those my those my kids. Those my boys. Those my girls. Love them. Uh, now now is the part of the show where we get to present a, a new 
new comedy to you. Uh, and tonight we're doing that with Wilburn. Uh, Wilburn is an indie sketch team, mostly in New York. It consists of Ashley Siebels, Charlotte O'Trimba, sounds familiar, Sharice Foster, Ellen Coe, Eric Diedrich, Jake Lewis, Catherine Coleman, Laura Ornella, Rowena Lair, and Tiffany Springle. You can follow them at Wilburn Haha on Instagram or TikTok to see their viral series, Name That Nepotism. It's an on-the-street game show. Check it out. And, um... Yeah, give it up for Wilburn. Here is their half-hour laugh, Erica's Nudes. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Do you have a moment to answer a question for a game show? The game is name that name, name that nepotism. When I was an extra on the show Girls, how many of the four girls came from white collar families but also repeatedly bumped into me on set? How could I possibly know that? Just take a guess. I have to go. Wait, no, the answer is four out of the four. What does Tarzan and Emily in Paris have in common? I don't know. Great hair? I don't know any. Well, I know some of those people. <laughs> Does Phil Collins have anything to do with this? Can you expand on Phil Collins? I know that he wrote the music for Tarzan. Oh, Lily Collins is related to him, yes. Did you see the realization? Despite being in the movie Almost Famous, Kate Hudson was actually related to someone famous. Who is her mom? Blythe Danner? No, that's, no, no, no. It's, um, um. I haven't seen the movie. She oh, was in Goldie Hawn. Goldie. <gasps> ding, ding, ding! And then she realized two years later that her face was in the same condition it was pre-surgery. Mm. So she asked what she could do naturally, and uh, I taught her face her size, and you can see how... In today's world, finding affordable health care can be a challenge for many. Thankfully, a unique way to solve this challenge has been discovered and used by many with excellent results. I'm Janine Applebaum. Moderator for People Who Use Facebook for Health Advice Instead of Seeking Professional Medical Services. With Facebook, help from your network of friends, family, and internet strangers for any and all of your health concerns are available to you at the click of a post. So if you have Facebook, you have health care. A couple more hours and then it's quitting time. You gonna make it, old man? Ugh, my shoulder's on the fritz again, and I can't afford no doctor. Eh, yeah, shoulder pain, eh? Let's see. Uh, says here you should... I sit and give it plenty of rest. Wow! Sounds like something a doctor would say. Yup. Now, let's get some ice on that shoulder stat. <laughs> Ow. Oh. <laughs> With Facebook, you get real answers to real problems from real people who've trained under some of TV's best doctors, like Meredith Grey or Gregory House. And without the exaggerated fear-mongering you get from WebMD. I'm either having an allergic reaction or it's leprosy. Leprosy, as in the 1800s leprosy, I should have gone to the doctor. Not when you have Facebook, you save time, money, and you get the same health care a doctor would provide. What is this, Doc? I'm not gonna die, am I? Well, come on in and let's take a look. Interesting. And that's all over? Call me a tree and cut me down because I am stumped. I'm gonna have to look this one up. Okay, 
It says here you have hyperconjunctive colitis aurora borealis and there's no known cure. So you're gonna die, my condolences. Whew. That was close. Thanks, Facebook. Facebook posts can even be created anytime, providing round-the-clock expertise for your health emergencies. When I made my post after waking up with a terrible stomach pain, Betty, my favorite knife is a scalpel Jones, gave me step-by-step -step instructions for removing my appendix. See, I'm not only a spokesperson, I'm a Facebook patient. I don't feel so good. Oh. Facebook healthcare. Real people, real care, real solutions. Are you tired of wasting precious money and time on phony predictions from phony psychics? Our certified professional psychics are... Hi, I'm Nathan DeSpicy. If you're like me, you used to look like this. If you're also like me, you lost all that weight and then went down a horrifying rabbit hole of body image issues that somehow made mirrors worse for me. Now, I want to gain it all back. <laughs> That's where weight gainers come in. The only weight program designed for people who lost weight and then realized maybe that wasn't the problem. Don't believe me? Listen to some testimonials from satisfied members. I used to have the eat too much type of anxiety, but then I got laid off so hard that it reversed polarities and I just stopped eating. Then one day, I was shopping in the hottie and hefty section of a department store. One of the employees came up to me and said, you're a size medium, right? Nothing in this section will fit you. I was taken by this person to a section called the rest of the store. There were so many clothes before I had three look options. Solid color tarp, problematic relative, and Austin Powers villain for formal occasions. I was so overwhelmed, I fainted, went to the ER, and I joined Weight Gainers the second I woke up. Now instead of my shirt saying, mmm, for medium, I'm saying, mmm, for the good tasty noise. help today demonstrate some facial exercises. Terrific. Okay, so let's do the Josh Green thing. The ship that killed their great-great-grandmother. And the movie that rocked your world. Now brought back for your kids' generation. Titanic High, premiering on The CW this fall. I can't believe we time traveled to live here on the Titanic. Yeah. It sucks your mom is turning it into a school, though. At least we're here together. At the CW, we know what teens want, and unfortunately, it's this. All right, students. For today's art class, I want you to draw me wearing this. Wearing only this. Ew, Mom! It even has political messaging that they can discuss on TikTok. We have to switch this bow to clean energy. It's literally 1912. What are we gonna switch to? I don't know, but I do know Taylor Swift and her clean burning jet will thank us. Oh, we have to save her. Oi, who's Taylor Swift? And is she gonna be here soon to help us shovel this coal? And we included way more sexual tension than you'll feel comfortable with them watching. I love you. I love you too. Are you scared? I'm just... I'm worried we're going too fast. Yeah. The boat should definitely slow down. That's not what I meant. Oh. All the high school tropes with a fun, dramatic twist. Ew. Get on a third class boat. You can't sit with us. Titanic High, coming this fall, canceled by December. I'll never let go. No cap. You're a grown woman. You shouldn't have to deal with acne. Hey, uh, I actually have a question for you. 
All right, your first question is, what family does Seinfeld and Zoolander have in common? I've never watched that. Uh... Oh, it's the, the dad who's the father of Jerry. I was going to say Adam Sandler, or am I so off? The dad is the father of Zoolander character. I don't know. What family does the West Wing and Two and a Half Men share in common? Um, I have no idea. It's the Shane family, Charlie Shane. And? And Emilio Estevez father is also a shame. Finger on the chin for light resistance and I'm going to scoop. We were best friends and college had just ended. And with everyone going on their separate journeys, we wanted a way for us all to stay connected. How about these? But when we found this pair of pants, ta-da! We knew it would keep us together. We'll share them equally, and they'll travel among us. And remember, no washing, because that'll take the magic out. And action. Reyna, we're ready for you now. Oh, I'll be there in a minute. Are you sure there's no dressing room around here? No, this is a non-union gig. Oh, and uh, hey, I know you're couch surfing right now, but the director really wants you to stop sending packages here. Oh, sorry about that. Thanks. <sighs> and that's a wrap on Zombie Bodega. CC, I hope these jeans are as good to you as they were to me. I got to play a zombie on an indie film for copy credit, no pay, three hours outside of the city. I can't quite explain it, but I know this is the start of something big. New York City, everything is fantastic. My internship is letting me, a mere 22-year-old, work overtime, all thanks to these magic pants. I mean, sure, the zipper's broken, but I still look so good. Oh, what was that? Well, I can't take them off. I'll stop getting opportunities. And they were just about ready to start letting me do coffee runs, too. I need a stick. nothing to wear. UPS package for Ashley. The jeans. Wait. Let's... Oh. oh! Maybe I should wash these. And remember, no washing because that'll take the magic out, out, out. Oh! <laughs> oh, my guy. Always hungry. <laughs> In the second inning now. So, uh, how was your day? Shh, 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 shh. He is about to. Oh, yeah! I just feel like we're really on the same wavelength here. Oh, uh, babe, grab me another beer. Oh, sure. Oh, whoa, whoa, and get some Febreze while you're at it. Something smells like death. Sure, no problem. Babe, your, your dog won't let go of my leg. Babe, babe. Uh, yeah, uh, this is the playoffs. <sighs> this is so cool. Today, I'm going to work for me. And wow, I'm so glad these jeans are here. After all my pants burned up in the dryer this morning, I was really banking on these arriving in time. Ah, how cute! Diana, could you please return this pair of jeans for me? I won't be home for a while, so it would be a big help. I wish I could work. 
wear a clean pair of pants for the first day at my startup. But there's just no other choice. I'll have to make these work. Man, I really think my startup making couture outfit boxes for pet lizards is really gonna take off. <laughs> Sometimes life is unexpected and unplanned. But sometimes, even when life seems unbelievable to you, you realize you get what you need. I'm confident that we can make an important difference in your life. Call now and find out how we can help you in matters of the heart. People are always asking me, Nate, how does weight gainers even work? And I tell them what I'm about to tell you. Our program has taken the guesswork out of gaining with our patented calorie rectangles. Designed by our in-house team of chefs, each calorie rectangle is made solely of a highly condensed animal fat reduction that contains 10,000 calories in one 8-ounce bar. And our members love it. We're trying to get back to feeling comfortable in our skin. And the weight gainers calorie rectangles take some of that stress off our plates and into our mouths. <laughs> totally. These are the only things we eat. We actually just sold all of our kitchen appliances so we could put in more cabinets so we would have more space to, to store, store our, our calorie, calorie rectangles. rectangles. <gasps> Jinx! Now you owe me a weight gainer's calorie rectangle. All right. You want lard or schmaltz flavor? You know I'm all about that tallow. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> it's good. It's a little chalky, but... It's good because they're paying us for the meeting was that face or size really worked wonders for you. Hi Instafam, I need to tell you about this new super absorbent period underwear I just got sent. Getting your period can be a drag, but this new technology is so comfortable and so absorbent you can go anywhere, even Thanksgiving. She a period uh, in just her underwear. Skyla, maybe introduce your family to your friends. Mom, I'm doing spawn con. What is that? This new moisture wicking technology is so comfortable, you can go anywhere. And it controls odors. Oh my god. And it, can, it holds 45 milliliters of liquid. Oh, that's nothing. I don't even leave the house unless I have my duct tape and four scotch bright sponges. It's true, we do bleed a lot in this family. You remember when you got your period, right? You kept thinking you had been shot, and I just kept saying, where's the hole? Where's the hole? I remember your grandmother, she'd just be in the tub the whole week. I'd have to bring up pierogies to her myself. Oh, and and myself. what about the chunks? You know what I mean? Like, uh, does your does your underwear have an ice cream scoop? That would be useful, you know? Just ignore them. This underwear can handle your heaviest periods. <laughs> like hell it does. <laughs> Oh my god, she ruined the linen chair. Uh, Gladys, get the carpet cleaner. I'm on it, Kathy. Oh, the strong one, the one for pets. Uh, the stain was theirs. Uh, maybe it's oh. cranberry sauce. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't smell like cranberry sauce. No, what do you know about smelling? You have long haul COVID. That hurts. <laughs> it was just like red wine, Mom. Uh, do you see any red wine on the table, Skylar? These new period underwear are so stylish. They come in 40 colors. You know, in fact, you know, the last time we had red wine was when your father ran the car into the tree. So no, it's not red wine. God rest his soul. I period a normal amount. Are you as excited as I am about this new underwear? Leave me a message in the comments. Oh my god, it's ruined. And that dog's been trying to come at your crotch all day, Skylar. You know, Gladys used to have to tie a bike chain around the trash during her period. Hey, you know what? Oh, let's get the dog in here, have her smell it. If she licks it, then we'll know for sure. Come here, Rusty. Come here. All right. Of smoke. Oh, oh. oh, Uncle Marty can't handle some period right. talk, huh? Okay. You know, in this house, we don't we don't shame women for perioding in their underwear. Amen. This house is like one of those murder mystery plays. Uh, there's blood everywhere, but nobody knows who's done it. Oh. It's not blood. It was there. 
Are you happy, Skyla? There's more blood on this chair than there was when God's son was on the cross. Amen. Use promo code Rusty for 20% off. Bye, InstaFam. Oh. Can someone hand me a wet wipe? I'm dripping everywhere. Oh, oh it's getting in my shoes. How about the cat? A goldfish? Don't be fooled. Call a sincere professional psychic. Excuse me, will you answer a question for name that nepotism? Oh my god, you're ruining my headshots. Uh, well, you're gonna need more than headshots in this industry. Boy Meets World might as well have been called Boy Meets Brothers Agent. What two siblings star on Boy Meets World and The Wonder Years, respectively? The Wonder Years was Kevin. Fred Savage. Fred Savage and... <laughs> no idea. It's the, it's the one who dates a panga. That's Ben Savage and Fred Savage. Eugene and Dan Levy are real life father and son, but who else on Schitt's Creek is in the Levy family? Well, I know she plays Twyla. Definitely don't know this. I'm um, Twyla, is Dan's sister. Yes, exactly. Twyla, played by Sarah Levy. Maya Hawke, who plays Robin on Stranger Things, was certainly no stranger to fame. Who are her parents? I have no idea. I got nothing. It's Ethan Hawke. Oh, that's right. And uh, Uma Thurman. Uma Thurman. Ethan Hawke. Oh, Uma Thurman. Mm-hmm. Dramatic and more dramatic as time goes by. So actually, as you get older, you actually start to look younger because you've been... The Spicy's back for round three to tell you all about our fantastic Weight Gainers app. Struggling to stay motivated? Track your progress with fun milestone achievements like... Roller coaster attendant sighed when they saw you. All your clothes say husky again. And your mom asked you to put on a shirt at her pool party. You'll stay focused on your goals. So the next time you get seconds at a dinner party, everyone will all look at each other like... Really? Alright. So what are you waiting for? Download the app and join Weight Gainers today. If you won't take it from me, take it from these people. Weight Gainers change our lives! Did I say it right? So you'll let her go. Taylor Swift's, you know, shit. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that looks like you're hitting someone away. Okay. Uh, it's hyperchylitis colitidis and hyperconjunctive colitidis and hyperhypercolitis. <laughs> Sorry. You know, they say the cold is good for the skin. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, tell me that's not <laughs>